Good morning, YouTube. It's uh, just before 6 o'clock on a Monday morning, headed into work. Uh, I thought I would uh, try my hand at another vlog. It's been a little while. That last vlog was really on uh, on that XJ. It seemed to go pretty well. People seem to like that one. Um, I enjoy doing these things. Um, I just got busy with uh, with a lot of other life. So uh, here I am trying this again. We'll, uh, we'll see. I, I finally put a video up. Um, from my Key West trip, uh, I thought it was pretty good. The water is beautiful. Uh, the bridge is long. Uh, I had a little bit of music. Uh, I talked to my uh, my uncle throughout most of that that ride. But uh, the dead spots, I finally found some music I could use. Uh, especially, I set it up a little bit on the the uh, what is that the free the fair fair use act, where if you're not using the video or the music for uh, uh, basically replacing what the artist is doing, uh, then it's, it's fair use. So I have uh, some snippets of some steel drum music, which is also free to get online. Uh, I don't think I posted a link to it. I'll uh, probably add that to the comments of that video so people can find it. Um, I, I like that music. It it's, uh, fits well with the video. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice morning here. Um, we have some warm temperatures in the Portland area, uh, 61, right where I sit right now. Uh, I'll probably dip down a little bit as I head down this hill. Uh, this week is uh, going to touch 100, uh, I think today, tomorrow. But then we'll drop back down into the 70s and finally have the weather that I prefer, 70s. There's a video out, uh, a few videos, Chris Caliente. I have some videos on dark siding, and I've kind of stayed away from it for a few reasons. Uh, one, Team Oregon uh, does not recommend doing such a thing. If you show up to a Team Oregon event with a car tire on your motorcycle, you will not participate. Um, so it's easier for me just to keep one tire on the bike. But Chris Caliente has, uh, has a motorcycle tire on another rim. Now, I looked it up, and that's not an inexpensive way to go. Uh, but I'll probably save up for such a thing so I can switch back and forth. Um, so when I, I go to an event where it's uh, mandatory, I can just throw on the other tire. Now, I say that. Everybody that uh, has gone dark side seems to say they're never going back. So it's possible if I go dark side, I'm not going to be switching back for some training. Um, I need to look and see what the Gold Wing Road Rider Association says about it for their training. So I'll, uh, I'll ask the next opportunity I get. You may have also saw that I posted... But I'm the assistant chapter director for the GWRRA, uh, Chapter I, here in Oregon. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, I like to like to help people, and uh, I love to help people learn more about their bikes. Uh, I feel like I still have lots to learn about my bike. Uh, we do have a training uh, in the September that will help me tremendously. Uh, but I love to pass down the knowledge that I do have, and I've done some, uh, some pretty significant training on this bike already through Team Oregon. Uh, you may have seen my video uh, from the Precision maneuvering clinic. I did that a second time. Uh, there's a level two that's going to happen in September. So September is going to be full training for me b between the uh, the GWRRA training and the Team Oregon training. It's, it's going to be good. But yeah, look at the, the haze there. I don't know if that's uh, smoke from the fires or if that's uh, some kind of fog. It is a little cool, so it's possible that it's, it's fog. Uh, it smells like it could very well be smoke coming back, though. We had a number of days here in the Portland area where uh, it kind of looked like that. And it's not clouds, it's smoke. So we'll see how the next couple of days fare. Uh, we're looking forward to the cooler temperatures. I also got firewood to cut, and I can't cut right now. We have chainsaw restrictions. Um, we're not allowed to use our chainsaw between the hours of 1 and 8. And uh, even when we do use our chainsaws, we have to have fire extinguishing equipment with us, as well as have a one-hour fire watch after we cut. Um, being uh, a working guy, I have an 8-to-5 job, so that means I, I don't get home until after 1 p.m. <laughs> I'm not about to get out with my chainsaw at 8 p.m. Um, that's time for me to go to sleep. As you might be able to tell by being up and moving before 6 a.m., so I don't know if I have any uh, watchers on this that uh, don't watch Chris. If you don't watch Chris, I recommend you go over and uh, watch some of his videos and see if, uh, see if he fits your style and you can learn some stuff from him. 
He, he's done a lot of interesting things. He started his own gold wing group. The, I think it's called the Chris Caliente Gold Wing Riders. I believe he's part of the GWRA as well as the AMA. So he's done some pretty good things by starting that group. And it's uh, it's not limited to uh, a location. There's plenty of people all over the U.S. and quite possibly the world that's joined his group. Uh, so if you don't have a group at all, uh, check him out. If you live in an area with a GWRA chapter, uh, which you probably do, uh, check that out. It's a very friendly bunch of group, a bunch of people. Uh, like to ride motorcycles. Now you might say, "Oh, I don't have a gold wing." Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, you're not required to have a gold ring to be part of the GWRA. Um, there's plenty of people who don't. Our chapter director, uh, she rides a slingshot. So some of you might say, "That's not even a motorcycle." Oh, that's fine. Other people go on our rides. They're driving cars. Um, it's all about uh, friends, fun, safety, and knowledge. So the friends and the fun part. Uh, that means we don't we don't care what you ride. As long as you come out and have a good time with it. So we're having a story ride we were starting to do. The rain came, and this is the first rain we had in a while, so we decided to cancel the ride. But, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a Jeep involved with that. Uh, another chapter of director, she brought her Jeep. She's got a CB radio, so it's, it's easy to, to follow at the end there. Uh, her husband, the other chapter director, uh, he had his gold wing. On that ride, and I, I can post a picture. I didn't get everybody's vehicle in it, but uh, see we got trikes, we got uh, two wheels, and we got slingshot, and I didn't get a picture of the Jeep, but we got it all, and it's all about uh, friends and fun, so come on out. And we meet at the Bomber Restaurant, uh, I believe that's in uh, Milwaukee, so we meet uh, second Saturdays of the month, right there in uh the bomber, Milwaukee, Oregon. I have a pretty decent commute here. The uh, smoke, I'm assuming, makes it a little darker than what it's been the last little bit, but we are getting shorter days. Uh, one thing I do like about it not being so bright right now is the sun is not blinding me. I've had plenty of mornings where I get up and I'm headed to work and i got to keep my hand up in the air to keep the sun out of my eyes. It's just so intense. So this is very pleasant. It's light enough to see as far as I need to see, but no intense blinding sun, which makes it unsafe. Oh yeah, please comment on the video, uh, this video, or any of the others that you enjoy. Uh, I'm just, I'm still learning this YouTube stuff. Um, I mean, I have 20 some odd videos out right now. Um, all of them are a little different, I think. Uh, some of them I started off where I didn't have any way to record my voice, at least not easily. And one time or two I tried to use that external recorder. I, uh, I, I failed to use it properly. If you're watching my Tour of Honor video, um, the sound quality is horrid. And that's because I was anticipating uh, using the external recorder. But uh, evidently there was a setting I needed to change once I plugged in the microphone. So that's very disappointing. Um, it would have been an excellent video other than that, I think. Um, but again, my my most watched video seems to be the uh, the other vlog on the XJ1100, which is a nice bike. I sold it not long ago. Well, I say that now. It might have been a year by now. Uh, I sold it. Um, it was a nice bike, big bike. I got it uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, and I think I said in that video, uh, but one of the reasons I wanted to see if I would like a bigger bike. I had some people like, oh, you won't you won't like the bigger bike. You know, they're heavy and whatever else their reasons were. And uh, and so I found a good deal on that one. It's like, well, I can get this one. Uh, ride the bigger bike. And it was 1100 so it was um, over 600 pounds anyway. Now, uh, I've been riding my uh, 300, which weighs less than 400 pounds. So that 1100 with the more power and the more weight. I liked it a lot. Um, so when I test rode uh, a Goldwing and I test rode um, a Connie, you know, um, Kawasaki Concor 14, got that 1400 in there, the, uh, basically the same engine as the ZX14R, just tuned a little differently for, for touring. Um, I mean, that bike was a lot of fun, but it was top heavy. So a little slow speeds would take a lot of getting used to for me. But this Goldwing, uh, Goldwing wasn't. 
putting the gas tank under your seat helps lower that center of gravity. Now, these things uh, surprise you how light they feel. <clears throat> and then the other thing I thought of, too, was when I was looking at that uh, Connie, was the, what I wanted to do to it would essentially make it to a gold wing. And I would put money into it, and it would be about the same price as a gold wing. So I decided I would just get a gold wing. It seems kind of silly to try to make something into one, and why don't you just get one? Uh, the gold wing to me is plenty fast. Uh, I forget how fast uh, Connie is in the quarter mile, but the gold wing is no slouch at, uh, what, mid-12 in the quarter mile. <coughs> plenty fast for me. Faster than most any other touring bike out there, if not any touring bike out there. But, um, she holds her own. Rode down to Key West and back. So, nothing wrong with this bike. I did put this taller screen on there. It had the uh, standard screen, and I'm a little tall. I'm somewhere around 6'1", and that uh, little screen just wasn't blocking the wind from my face. So this one does. It's got a little recurve on it. It's the one of those uh, LRS. Um, I forget the name of it. Uh, anyway, I can put that on here, the name of the brand. But it's basically what they make for the gold wing, and it's the tallest one they make, and I've enjoyed it too. It, uh, it took a little abuse, I think, when it went through Utah and Colorado. Uh, we had some pretty high winds. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing 60 mile an hour winds. I saw I saw flags uh, just shredded by the wind, just shredded. Now, they weren't U.S. flags, so don't get upset, but they were shredded. All the U.S. flags look pretty good. I'm assuming they change them out regularly. Probably have to, the four flags. Yeah, I got this nice commute through the uh, through the agricultural areas. Uh, the XJ, I was working on a different location at that point, and so the XJ, I, I was able to ride um, on Bald Peak a little more. Uh, took that ridge, uh, Mountain Mountain View Road, and all that kind of kind of ride, which is a wonderful ride. I could do that to where I work now, but it would add a good bit of time to my commute because I'm a little further further north now. Our traffic is light. I'm here just after 6 o'clock. Makes for a nice restful commute. I like making these videos. The only challenge with these vlogs is I like to listen to music on my commute in. And the uh, way the center works, it won't let me listen to the music at the same time. Unless I put it through the speakers like I did on one of my videos that's not published yet. Um, it's going, I think, going into Key West. Uh, I ended up turning on some music because everybody else's center batteries had died. So I was the only one, but I wasn't stopping to turn off the um, the GoPro pack, the Bluetooth pack that sits on the GoPro. Well, I wasn't going to stop and turn that off. So I just kept riding, and I just put it through the speakers. And uh, I had it on the Jimmy Buffett channel because I had uh, satellite radio at that point. And uh, really fitting. Uh, I think one particular harbor was one of the songs that came on while I was recording. So that was really nice. One of my favorites, Jimmy. That was one reason I looked up the fair, I figured out about the fair use laws, because uh, it was a Jimmy Buffett song, and I know those are copyrighted, um, and I didn't want to infringe on anything. But uh, and it was incidental to the video, uh, not a high quality because it's playing through the speakers. Uh, and then being picked up by the mic that's inside my helmet. Um, but you can tell what it is. So I'm glad for the fair use. I'm not going to get in trouble for every little every little song that happens to come on. And I definitely don't want to take away from any of the artists. They deserve their dues. They work hard. They create the music. Especially someone like Jimmy. He's been working really hard for many years. Uh, he does a great job looking like it. he's not doing anything. But... Uh, that's a hard working man. And this is the part of my commute when the traffic starts to pick up. We're here in Beaverton. And I'm early enough, so I will hit uh, Highway 217. If I'm running late to work, I will, I will take another side street. 
and get there, avoiding all the traffic, because 217 uh, here in a little while will be a muted on-ramp. And between that and the bumper-to-bumper traffic, it just doesn't feel safe in the morning. I mean, I've been through Atlanta traffic. can't remember if I have video of that or not. I think I do. been through Atlanta traffic. I can do the traffic. I just don't prefer to do it in my morning commute every single day. Not the bumper-to-bumper stuff. So you should see this as I get on 217 here in just a few minutes. That traffic's not too bad. Some people don't believe that 217 is ever not too bad. But you just got to get up early in the morning. But I'm enjoying my gold wing. Uh, one day I'd like to turn my little bike into maybe a 650 or something. A little more fun in the curves. Uh, the gold wing does fine in the curves. just takes a little more work. But, um, you know, do them push-ups. Uh, practice a lot. She does quite well in the curves. Now that's a video from Tell the Dragon I'll be posting. Maybe that should be the next one I post. Hello, the dragon. I don't know if you anybody wants to comment on uh, which video to post next. Please do so. I have uh, some stuff from Tell the Dragon. Um, I'm not even sure. I got I got hours and hours of video from that trip in uh, April. One reason I haven't posted anything else because it's like I got all this video to go through. So I'll go through it and uh, find the good stuff and post it for you. But yeah, Tell the Dragon. Uh, some more riding on the keys if you want that. Uh, Atlanta traffic. Um, what else do we have? Riding into Key West. What else do we have? I don't want to look at it, but those are the ones I'm thinking about. Is he a little more in the Keys? Atlanta traffic or Tell the Dragon? I'm leaning a little toward Tell the Dragon. So if no one comments, that's probably the next one I'll work on. And it was slow and it was rainy. But we did it. Some people slay the dragon, and we just kind of tiptoed around it. But it was rainy, and we had never been on it before. And my uncle had a brand new, to him, motorcycle, so he's still, still getting used to it. But uh, he's been practicing, he's been riding it, he's been doing some cone drills. So uh, next time he's there, which might be soon, depends on if he rides over there with my dad or not, um, I'm sure he'll do a little more slaying than tiptoeing. Hit a little traffic. See how he kind of jumped in front of that car? I do not want to ride in blind spots. So bumper to bumper traffic, I think that's one reason I don't like it because you end up in somebody's blind spot. But there's cars everywhere so people don't typically hit you. It's like they could back there. Uh, I should post a link. Uh, I read an article. It's like 128 ways to drop your motorcycle. And uh, I wrote up a little article uh, using some of those um, and some of my own. Uh, left a picture of my poor motorcycle in the sand. My poor Goldwing. I went, uh, I was in, um, it's outside of Cuba, New Mexico. And I was going camping. I had eaten a delicious meal at uh, El Bruno's Restaurante. And then, uh, I don't know, it was 8 o'clock or so when I got back to where I was going to, I got to where I was going to sleep. And I looked on the map, and I get there, and I go, it looks like sand, but then I see that it's very well packed sand. So, okay, I'm good. So then I head down in there, and I go, oh, I need to turn over here. And I turned for one of the little little side roads, and uh, it was no longer packed sand. It was very loose and very deep sand. So I was on the side for a while. I wrote up that story a bit. Uh, basically what happened, I tried to get the, the bike out. Um, I ended up setting up my tent in a spot thinking, well, I'll just, I'll just get the bike out and uh, we'll camp over here. But then I couldn't get the bike out, not by myself. Uh, I kept pushing, but my feet would slide in that sand. So eventually I moved the tent, put it by the bike, and 
figured, well, I'll um, I'll sleep here by the bike. If anybody comes by, they'll see the bike or the tent or something and not hit us. So by the time I got that set up, a truck pulled down into the area, and I walked over to him cautiously. He's a fairly new, uh, I believe it's a F-150, and eventually the guy rolled down the window, very curious what in the world I was doing there, 10, something at night. I explained to him I needed some assistance picking up my motorcycle, and he's like, where's your motorcycle? And it was just on the edge of his, of his headlight. So I pointed at it. He agreed and got out and helped me. Um, so I was very thankful that God put him in my life to it was time my bike to be picked back up. So I picked it up, moved it out of the uh, path there. I was afraid some teenager would come flying through there. And I uh, got out of the path and uh, slipped the night there. Put the kickstand down. Uh, it was in the it's still sandy where I went to put the kickstand down. So I found a uh, crushed beer can and used that for my kickstand. I will not camp there again. There's just too much trash everywhere. Beer cans, beer bottles, broken bottles, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of garbage there. So I will not be camping there again. It's um, U.S. forest land. So it's free to camp. So the free part was good, but all the trash was not. So I camped there, and then I also camped in Texas on a lake. It was nice, but the mosquitoes were trying to take all my blood. I feel like I gave a pint at least. But yeah, it's 2.17, so you're not so busy. A little bit of traffic. Enough to know that you're on 2.17, but not bumper to bumper by any means. And then uh, off 217, on the cruiseway, and a couple turns, and I'm at work. So I hope you enjoy my morning commute video. Please comment below. Please, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. <clears throat> Once I'm at 100, I can have my own URL, and then I can easily advertise my channel. Right now, it's just V's and X's and O's and zeros and whatever else. It's not something I can say, hey, come to my channel. I do have a, a web page. It's uh, sorely, sorely needs some updating. But uh, adventureswithredbeard.com. Check that out. Got some articles there. Some of them going back before I rode my motorcycle. When I was uh, a beach body coach, uh, there's some uh, there's an article in there on why I'm not a beach body coach anymore. Um, yeah, I am a Team Oregon motorcycle safety instructor, but I am not a beach body coach. Exercises are good though, but anyway, you can read the article if you're interested, and uh, we'll see you later.